What's going on YouTube? Chris back with another video. If you've been following along with my channel from the beginning, you know that I enjoy Sony devices, Sony phones. Um, here we're going to be checking out the Xperia 1. Um, I have checked out the X Compact, which I really love. I love the Compact series and then the XZ1 um, a couple years ago. But the Xperia 1, this is pretty much a new form factor. Um, I haven't checked out one of their devices in a while. I'm excited. Um, I'm going to be using this as a primary device for uh, a little while and get my review later on. So subscribe so that way you can check that video out when I have that posted. This is just an unboxing. So we're going to go through the specs, the design. Um, do know that I did pick this up myself, um, actually locally from someone. And I was too excited to actually do a full unboxing video. Um, but I have already set up the phone myself. So just keep that in mind. I'll still do the unboxing um, and then kind of go through uh, some things about the phone already. So uh, we have the phone here. Uh, this is the black version. You can pick this up on Amazon. I'll leave the link down in the description where you can pick it up. It is pricey. Sony devices are not cheap. Um, this is going to range probably $800 to $900. It launched, I think, at 1000 with a free pair of Sony Bluetooth headphones. So what else do you get in the box? You do get a 18 watt USB-C power delivery quick charger. So that's nice. You do get a USB-C to C uh, black cable. Now this is a pretty uh, rubbery uh, cable. Um, so it's not like others or like braided or anything like that. It's pretty grippy. It keeps its shape. Um, so I don't know if that's really a plus or anything, but I'm not too fond of that cable. You do get a pair of Sony 3.5 headphones that are black, which is ironic because the phone doesn't have a headphone jack and they include a, a dongle. Now, they could have included USB-C headphones, which would have been much nicer, but I feel like they cheaped out in that regard. Setting all the accessories aside, we have a new aspect ratio of 21 by 9. Now, this is a really tall and narrow device. Uh, something you will notice right away is just how comfortable the phone is in your hand. And I really love holding this phone. Um, it's not super wide to where it's uncomfortable. It's not difficult to hold. It actually makes using the phone quite nice. Um, and for the, the heft, of it, um, it's not unmanageable at all. Even though it is taller aspect ratio, it is tall, uh, much more difficult to reach the top of the screen, but it's it's not bad. Um, I like the, the thinness of the phone overall. So the, the screen, with it being 21 by nine, uh, that's the major selling point of this phone. So this is a 6.5 inch OLED 4K display. This. I can tell you right off the bat is I think the most beautiful display I have experienced on any smartphone ever. Um, I first saw this at a Best Buy so if you really want to experience it maybe check out your local Best Buy and see if they have one of these on display and you'll be able to understand what I'm talking about. The The colors on this are just immaculate. The blacks are amazing. The, the dynamic range is awesome. So real quick, I'm just showing you just a demo um, of what this display can can do. Um, this video is not, just you watching this is not uh, gonna give it justice, but this thing is so gorgeous. Like I could watch content on this all day long and that's the point of this display is being able to watch 21 by nine movies on this and really get the, the viewing experience like you would get on a Sony uh, TV that's, uh, AMO, or that is OLED 4K. Uh, there's no 90 hertz or 120 hertz on this, unfortunately, but nonetheless, this definitely compensates for the, the quality. Now, internally, uh, this is using the Snapdragon 855, so it is a top of the line flagship uh, SOC. It is using six gigs of RAM, um, yes, there's devices out there with 8, 12, um, 6 I think is adequate for Android. Uh, nowadays, it's perfectly fine. I haven't had any issues with it for uh, the little bit that I've been using this already. Um, and also, the battery size, uh, 
is one concern that I have. 3300 milliamp hours, that is pretty tiny uh, for a phone with a flagship chipset and a 4K display that is of this screen size. Um, so we'll have to test out how the battery is. Sony has always been quite good on battery life with their like stamina modes and all the little optimizations they have. But uh, yeah, so let's go around the phone real quick. Um, on the bottom, we have our USB-C uh, fast charging port, again, 18 watts. And then we also have a one of two speakers down here. So there's a bottom firing speaker and there's also a mic. On the right hand side is a huge party going on. Um, so let's go through this starting from the bottom. Uh, so on the bottom, you have the traditional uh, dedicated camera shutter button and also a half press to focus button. So you can quickly launch the camera by pressing and holding on that button. And then you're able to half press to focus. And you can see those little like green squares showing that it's focused, just like a standard point and shoot. And then finish the whole press of that button to shoot. So this is really um, dedicated towards like camera enthusiasts that are familiar with that half press. Then they have a power button and then a side mounted capacitive fingerprint scanner. It is weird that the fingerprint scanner is separate from the power button. I'd have wished that it was all in one. That way you're removing one additional button on the side, but at least that way you can check your notifications without having to like unlock the phone by accident if you don't want to do that. And then above the fingerprint scanner is the volume rocker up and down. Um, there was a, an OTA update for, for this device, um, which I feel like has um, drastically decrease the performance on the fingerprint scanner. Sometimes it doesn't read my fingerprint at all. Um, it's slow to unlock, so maybe uh, in another update in the future, it will improve that. But right now I'm trying to unlock it, nothing's happening. And then once I power on the screen, now it reads it just fine. I don't know, it's weird. It's inconsistent, unfortunately. But at the top, we have another mic. We have our SIM tray, which supports micro SD card of up to 512 gigs and a nano SIM, which is great. You don't need to use a SIM tool to take an in and out of your SIM card or micro SD card, which is awesome. Sometimes you don't have that tool with you all the time. On the back, uh, we have a three camera setup. One is a standard, a standard angled lens, another is a telephoto, and the third is a super ultra wide uh, angled lens. Each of these are 12 megapixels, and each of them have different focal lengths as well. So that's great, you can be creative in terms of how you want to use those focal lengths. So the telephoto is a two times optical zoom, uses a 52 millimeter focal length. The main sensor is 26 millimeter focal length, and then the ultra wide is 16 millimeter as well. You also have LED flash, and then you have the uh, WRGB uh, sensor to for accurate white balance as NFC does not have wireless charging. A phone costing this much should have wireless charging in my opinion. You have Samsung, you have Pixel, you have Razer, you have tons of other devices out there, LG, that have wireless charging. Apple, you're already missing the mark I, in my, I feel if you don't include that. There is dust and water resistance, so no worries there. Up here in the front, we do also have a eight megapixel front facing camera, and then your earpiece, which also acts as a front facing speaker. The sound on this is fantastic. So with the whole overview of the phone in terms of design um, out of the way, this does include 128 gigs of internal storage as well. So plenty of space there and expandable via micro SD card. So Sony has been always good with keeping their phones pretty uh, stock Android without too much bloat or changes in terms of Android itself. And it's, it's nice and refreshing to come back to a Sony phone. It's very fast and fluid. So Sony has implemented this side sense feature um, that allows you to double tap on the side of the screen slash the frame to pull up kind of this little menu for app, uh, quick access to apps. And then you're able to actually slide down to go back instead of reaching all the way back down to this back button, or you can slide up to open a multi-window uh, setup. So all of that is available on either side. You can change the sensitivity. 
Um, with Sony, you do have the capability for uh, audio settings for Dolby Atmos and upscaling uh, audio quality for higher res. Here we can go ahead and listen to a, an example of the audio coming from the dual speakers. And with these speakers, uh, Sony actually includes vibration haptic capability. So if we go back into sounds and we have this dynamic vibration. So with that dynamic vibration setting, um, basically the haptics inside the phone make the phone vibrate, kind of giving it that sort of bass feeling. So if we take a look at some of the settings for the display options, we can see there's color mode and standard mode. Standard mode, you don't really have um, much improvement, but if we go into creator mode, you have more accurate colors. You have 10-bit color, uh, HDR, um, so that really improves the quality in terms of the image that you're going to be seeing on the on the screen. We also have a white balance option, so you can make it warmer, or cooler, or your custom settings that you like. And then overall, the display is just quite bright. Um, no complaints here whatsoever. Uh, we'll have to test that in my full review, daylight readability, but uh, stay tuned for that. So yeah, so other than that, I'm um, pretty much you have the stock Android launcher, um, not nothing else in terms of uh, features in that regard. The cameras, we can take a look at real quick. Again, this is just a quick, uh, quick look at the, the phone. Here is our standard lens. Here's our two times, and then we also have our ultra wide angle lens here too. Now you can quickly kind of swipe between the normal and the optical zoom and then press this wide angle, but I think they need a lot of work on this camera app. Um, it's convoluted and kind of uh, clunky. Uh, you have your modes down here to go to pro mode in terms of like manual settings, but I wish that uh, everything was kind of more using of this space. There's a lot of black space wasted. Um, and then they have another app for Camera Pro, which lets you actually uh, manually control the video and record a video and manually set all of your, your configurations. So we have, this is really for content creation. So you have resolution for 4K, 2K, you have your frames per second, you have what type of lens that you want to use, white balance, ISO level, all that can be set in here and you have access to all of your uh, noise levels for audio and you can screen grab from taking a snapshot and save your file. So you have a separate app altogether for manual video recording. So yeah, so that was just a quick look and unboxing of the Sony Xperia 1. I'll be doing a full review later on um, in the coming weeks. Let me know if you guys have any questions, if you're curious about something that I can definitely cover in the uh, full review. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. Leave any questions down below in the comments section. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.